welcome to Everything Economics. We study microeconomics, macroeconomics, and every other type of economics here. Welcome back. So in this part, we will discuss how the consumer price index is calculated. Uh, in the previous part, we discussed what uh, inflation was and what CPI was. CPI was consumer price index or CPI was used to calculate inflation rate. Now we will discuss how CPI is calculated. There are several steps, so we will uh, discuss them one by one. The first step is fix the basket. Determine what prices are most important to the typical consumer. So typical consumers, uh, we need to understand what a typical consumer is. A typical consumer is a consumer who does not purchase a Lamborghini car or who does not purchase a Rolex watch. These are, uh, these are two goods which are super expensive and are mostly purchased by only the elite class, the richest in, in a country or in a nation. So these goods and many other goods which a typical consumer or a consumer like me or like uh, maybe you uh, doesn't purchase. So those goods are included in the ba basket. And uh, uh, to in in, uh, in the real life, there are uh, there have been a lot of surveys done uh, throughout the world in different countries to find out what consumers uh, purchase in their daily life most of the times. And there were 600 products which consumers normally use in their daily life. Uh, these are six these 600 products. It's not the exact number, but it's about 600 products. So uh, so that is the first step. The sur uh, survey consumers to determine what kind of goods they use, what uh, goods they use in their daily life, and then uh, a basket is fixed. Once the basket is fixed, then we move on to the next step. But before we move on to the next step, uh, there, here, there, uh, this is a basket which a typical consumer, you see, here we have a family, a, a normal family. And this family normally purchases, uh, uh, normally spends 3% on clothing and footwear, 5% on communication, 6% on healthcare, 7% on education and stationery, and 22% uh, on food, 25% housing, and uh, transport, 16%, and 16% recreation and others. So in total, uh, this is how uh, a typical consumer in uh, let's say you in the United States or some other country would spend their income so this is what a basket consists of and here we have uh, in communication we have an iPhone in clothing we have shoes and in food we have uh, a typical consumers eat every uh, every kind of food and in housing we have uh, the rents and uh, similarly in education and stationery we have books so whenever the prices of these goods increase or decrease uh, the inflation rate changes these are simply goods and services commonly used by family if the prices of these goods and services increases a typical family will have to spend more here we are talking about this basket. So this is uh, the first step. We have to fix the basket. It will be uh, it will be almost the same uh, for different countries, but not exactly the same because consumers in United States uh, 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 they uh, they purchase different stuff than consumers in let's say China. So the basket would be different, but the goods are almost six hundred. Uh, for which the prices the price increase or price decrease is normally tracked but in our example uh, we will just use two different goods the basket will consist so consists of hot dogs and hamburgers four hot dogs and two hamburgers so th this is the first step we will continue with this uh, example in the next uh, in in next steps as well so we are using just two goods because it will be easier for you to understand that way. I mean, 600 goods would be too much, right? Moving on. The second step is compute the basket's cost. Use the data on prices to calculate the cost of basket of goods and services at different times. So first, 
in the uh, in the first step we have a basket and in this in this basket we have around 600 goods and services that a normal consumer uses uh, throughout the year so once we have decided what those uh, i mean we don't decide that we find that out through consumer surveys and questionnaires and uh, once we know what those 600 goods would be what we do is then we track the prices of those goods and services uh, whether the prices have increased or decreased the example that we used uh, for uh, we had two goods hot dogs and hamburgers so in step two we will find uh, sorry uh, let me go the pen in step two we will find the price of each good in each year now here we have the example we have three years 2008 2009 and 2010 the price of hot dog in each year we have it here and for uh, hamburgers we have it here so as you can see each year the price has increased by one dollar for hot dogs and uh, similarly for hamburgers as hamburgers the price increased by one dollar as well each year so that's the second uh, step we just find out the price of each good in the basket for each year so uh, I mean in this example we, we just have two goods but in uh, in the real world we have around 600 goods so we would create a table of 600 goods like this one after this we have step 3 where we compute the cost of basket of goods in each year so to calculate that first we have 2008 for the year 2008 the price of hot dog was dollar one you can see it here so one dollar into the basket had four hot dogs so four into one similarly the price of hamburger was two dollar per hamburger into the basket had two hamburgers so when you add these two you get eight dollar per basket similarly in 2009 the price has increased to dollar two for the hot dog the quantity is same here and the price for hamburger has increased to dollar three the quantity is same here so when we add that we get dollar 14 per basket so that's the price of basket in 2009 and in a similar fashion the price of basket in 2010 is 20 dollars so these are step two and step three uh, what we have simply done is we have computed the baskets cost uh, let me just add that this is also step three moving on to the fourth step this is the fourth step we have choose a base year and compute the index designate one year as the base year making it the benchmark against which other years are compared compute the index by dividing the price of the basket in one year by the price in the base year and multi multiplying by 100 so first we need to understand what a base year is uh, a base year is the year in which an index is set to 100 while computing uh, macroeconomic numbers uh, normally like inflation or economic growth rates indices are used you know so to monitor prices in this case the statistical agencies of the government will choose a basket of goods and set the value of this basket to 100 for a chosen base year so in the base year your index value is 100 and you calculate uh, like here the base year that we have chosen is 2008 and uh, uh, the index value is 100 as you, as you can see here and to compare uh, the inflation rate or the consumer price index uh, we have to uh, select this base year because we have to uh, we gotta have a benchmark against which the price level of the uh, of the following years will be compared so once we have the base year, uh, like 2018 in this case, now we will compute the consumer price index and the formula is 
compute the index by dividing the price of the basket in one year. We have the price of the basket in 2009, $1.14, divided by the price of the basket in 2008, that is previous year, and multiply that, that by 100. So here we have 175. This simply means that the price level is increased from the base value of 100 to 175. And in a similar fashion from 175 to 250. I will repeat. First, we choose the base year. In this case, 2008 is the base year. Once we have the base year, we use the formula to calculate consumer price index in each year. <clears throat> Sorry. The formula is price of the basket in one year divided by the price in the base year and multiplying by 100. So in 2008, the price of the basket was $8. The base year is 2008, so the price is same in 200. We will always get the, uh, the CPI index value 100 in the base year. After that, the value in current year, that is 14 divided by the base year in 200, 175 in a similar fashion, 250. Once we, have the, uh, once we have calculated the consumer price index in each year, we move on to the next step. Step 5. Compute the inflation rate. Now that uh, the inflation rate is the percentage change in the price index from the preceding period. So in step 4, here we had uh, the CPI of 100, 175 and 250. Now we will use these numbers to calculate inflation rate. So to calculate the inflation rate, to calculate the inflation rate, the formula that we use is current index value minus the index value in previous year divided by the index value in previous year into 100, which is 75%. This simply means that the inflation rate was 75% in the year 2009. Now we do the same thing for the year 2010. The index value in 2010 minus index value in 2009 divided by the index value in 2009 into 100, which is 43%. This is the inflation rate in 2010. The important thing to understand here is that the inflation rate of 75% and 43% is only for the two products that we chose in the example, that is hot dogs and hamburgers. All right, so I will just write out uh, write the formula here once again. Uh, so to calculate in, uh, in inflation, we need index value of present year minus index value of previous year divided by index value of previous year into 100. This is the simple formula to calculate inflation rate from the uh, CPI that we calculated in part, uh, sorry, in, uh, in the previous slide. That is the fourth step. So that's it. These are the five steps. This is the summary. Uh, so this is the example. We had in step one, we had like uh, four hot dogs and two hamburgers. That was the first step. That was the basket. In step two, we find the price of each good in each year, 2008, 9, 10. We start from 2008 because we have decided to choose uh, 2008 as the base year. Compute the basket cost of basket for of good in each year. We have done that as well. Once we have done that, uh, we chose the base year as 2008 and compute the CPI. We calculate the CPI in each year, which is calculated by the formula uh, right here. The cost of basket uh, in present year divided by the cost of basket in base year in 200. And uh, finally, we, have, we calculate the inflation rate using the values from previous step which is the index value in current year minus the index value in previous year divided by index value in previous year into 100. So the inflation rate was 75% for this basket 
in 2009 and for 2010 the, the inflation rate for the same basket was 43 percent that's it for this part we learned how to calculate uh, the inflation rate inflation rate which is basically uh, calculated using the consumer price index here we have the whole picture a, a simple example but in the real world we have more goods not two but around 600 and uh, we need to calculate the change in price level of those all of those 600 goods from one year to another but we ha also have to choose a base year uh, when the price of the index is 100 all right so i will see see you guys in the next part